Oh hey there! My name's Adam. Welcome to my unboxing video. Uh, I picked up that R34 GTR last year, wow. Um, and I haven't really touched it at all. Part of the reason I'm waiting on parts, part of the reason I'm kind of getting distracted with other builds and stuff. I will go ahead and forewarn you that in this video, this stuff that we're unboxing and the stuff that I'm going to be doing to the 34 GTR, because we should be able to install all this stuff in one video, um, is all cosmetic stuff. I don't want to start modding or playing with any performance stuff until I kind of have the cohesive package, but in the meantime, I can at least try to get the car looking how I want it to look, so that way we have an awesome paperweight. The car's still cool. It's stock. It's a little slow, but a lot of these packages I ordered a really long time ago. Uh, they're all from Japan. They're from a lot of different cool brands over there, um, and we will start with this one right here. One funny thing to note, too, is I actually forgot a lot of the stuff that I ordered. Um, there's more boxes than stuff that I thought I got, so this is going to be like kind of, I guess you could say like Christmas for me. So first box, we have something from Nismo. I think I know what these are. Ah, oh, sick. Okay, they are what I thought they are. So these are actually the fins that will get mounted to the V-Spec diffuser. So in the back, they'll just kind of be like additional fins because uh, I don't remember if there's any on the stock one, but these I think are, I don't remember if they're S-Tune or what. I get really confused by all the different types of GTRs. There's Z-Tune, M-Spec, S-Tune, all this different stuff. For reference, my car is a V-Spec one. It does have all the V-Spec stuff still on it. What's cool about the 34 GTR is there is a lot of like factory add-on. This is a Nismo product that's made as kind of like a cool aftermarket add-on. It is really expensive to modify a 34 GTR. I think altogether between these packages there's about $7,000 of dumb cosmetic stuff. So it adds up very, very quickly. Unfortunately, none of this is sponsored either, but it's okay. Boom, box one done. And I'd like to give a massive shout out to my sponsor that this video is brought to you by. One of my sponsors, Movement. They make a lot of awesome watches, sunglasses, and accessories, and conveniently enough, this watch actually goes pretty well with the R34 interior. Valentine's Day is literally right around the corner and finding the right gift can sometimes be kind of stressful. So Movement has gone ahead and carefully assembled Valentine's Day gift boxes where they've curated their best-selling watches, jewelry, and eyewear for the perfect set for him or her. A clean, timeless watch is a great gift idea. It's something that they'll wear every day and with every watch order, you'll get a free gift box and a free extra watch strap, which is very convenient. All packaged together for you. And if you're getting a gift for your significant other while you're at it, they actually have some special duo boxes that can let you get away with a watch for yourself as well. It's got one for him, one for her, so you can both look good on Valentine's Day. You can get 15% off today by going to movement.com forward slash LZ, and that comes with free shipping and free returns, plus the free extra watch strap and plus the free gift box. All you gotta do is go to movement.com forward slash LZ for the most stress-free Valentine's Day gifting yet. And I wanna give a massive shout out to Movement for sponsoring this video. Now back to the R34 stuff. I'm like kinda of intentionally making this corny because it, this like setup, right now I have my camera balancing on a ladder and it, and it looks like almost so formal. I don't know. I thought it'd be funny. I was gonna do this live, um, but then I realized I'll probably have an anxiety attack because every time I do a live stream, people do super chats and I can't answer all of them in time. And then they start disappearing and then I start freaking out and feeling bad. And I figured while I'm trying to unbox stuff carefully and not scratch carbon fiber bits, I probably should have been live streaming. Next product is from, I want to say this is another Nismo piece. Can confirm, Nismo piece, this is, if I recall correctly, this piece right here is an S-Tune, whoa, dry carbon wing blade for the wing in the rear. This looks sick. I didn't realize it was dry carbon. All right, I'm kind of pumped now. The one on the car right now is factory and it's just like an aluminum, which is cool, uh, but it's not, I guess mine's not really pitted. It just doesn't really flow with the rest of the car because I don't have anything else silver on the car. So the little carbon bits will all kind of just like flow nicely. And we'll move on to another long box that's strikingly similar to the last box. I wonder why. All right, guys, what do we have in this one? Another wing? What? So this was actually my mistake. I don't know why I did this. I think it was actually stupid and I ordered stuff and forgot other stuff that I ordered. So this right here is a superior auto creative carbon wing. Now it's a little bit different style than the other one because this isn't just the little blade in back. This I believe would replace the entire piece. Um, kind of interesting. I don't know which I'm going to like better. I think one of these I ordered as an accident. I kind of like the dry carbon, but I'm just going to probably put both on the car and see which flows the best. If you do happen to own an R34 GTR and you want to buy whichever one I don't use, sounds ridiculous, right? But there is actually a very big group of R34 GTR owners in the US. Um, I'll probably sell whichever one I don't use. I want to say the Nismo one was really expensive and it was like $1,300 for the dry carbon piece. 
And then I want to say the superior one was like $700 for this instead. So obviously the dry carbon is, I'm assuming this as well, it feels like fiberglass with a layer of carbon. That's usually how most aftermarket aero parts are made. See, this is where it's going to get interesting though, because I don't remember a lot of the other boxes now, because there's like a, a bunch of boxes that are all the same length as the wings. And I definitely didn't order eight wings. So this is where it gets interesting because we've got more boxes that look like wing size. It feels heavier than a wing though, that's for sure. All right, this one has a very large packing slip, so maybe there's a lot of stuff in here. I'm not sure. Oh yeah, we got some goodies, guys. All right, we got one box, another box. Ooh, ooh, this is a good one. This is a good one. Christmas. All right, do you recognize this shape? Yo. One of the things that kind of sucks about the 34 GTR, I don't want to say it sucks. It's not like the R32 where you can get a bunch of cool, like old discontinued retro stuff because most of the stuff they still make. I guess that could be viewed as a good thing, but also, I don't know, I think it's less cool buying parts that you can still buy than like getting cool rare stuff. But anyway, this is a super cool Mines Titanium Strut Bar. That's like a GTR thing. Like Titanium Strut Bar is a must. There's a bunch of different ones and I was pretty hyped on this one. Yo. Don't know what's in this. It might just be hardware for the mine strut race, but I'm not sure. Oh, more stuff for mines. So this looks like a mine shift boot. It's like Alcantara with uh, like silver stitching. A mines e-brake boot. This is an OEM emblem. Forgot I ordered that. Alcantara armrest kit. Oh, and a new OEM shift knob. Yee. All right, we got one more box that was in with all that stuff. Let's see what it is. Oh, I think this is also for mines. So that, that basically seems like it was just a mines box, even though they all come from the same exporter. Um, this box is pretty much all the stuff that I got from mines. And this right here is one thing that I was like slightly quite, oh, two things, Never mind. Okay, so this piece right here, I was kind of questionable about. My mirror is failing in my GTR. Typically, I would just get an OEM one, but Mines did make kind of a cool option, and as much as I want to keep the car kind of OEM and nice, if there is a cool brand like Mines that makes aftermarket stuff, I thought I could give it a shot. So this is a blue glass carbon rear view mirror from Mines. It has a cool little Mines logo on it. I don't know if I like it or if I don't like it, but it's my car. So I guess it does matter if I like it or don't like it. All right, we've got one more long box. This one's also very light. I don't know what it is. I could probably look at the label and it would tell me. If I had to make a guess, floor mats? Nah, it's too light for floor mats. It feels like another carbon weight, which wouldn't make any sense. Unless I was just extremely dumb and got like 17 wings for some reason. Bro, we heard you like wings, so we got you a wing for your wing, bro. Well, they like tape stuff over the box so people don't see the logos probably. Yeah. Mike Devine, you need to come down to Florida to make my unboxing videos better. How crazy is it to think there's probably a full-time professional filmer for unboxing videos? Mike, that could be you. Holler at me. You want to film my unboxings? That could be a new YouTube channel. We'll just order parts and just make cinematic unboxing videos. We'll do, uh, what's it called, like ASMR with just like all the, the knife and sawing noises. Ooh, that's cool. I forgot about this. This is both functional and aesthetic. Garage Defend, another cool company from Japan. This is a carbon cooling panel. Very neat. This will just kind of like fit right in the bay. It both makes the bay look a lot cleaner and more simple, um, but it helps channel the air through the radiator and it'll help the car stay a little bit cooler, which is a huge thing to worry about when you have an RB that produces so much heat. Okay, I just realized I was wrong again. Those two ink pieces are the same. I guess the superior one just like sticks out a bunch where the other one is just kind of like an OEM replacement. Uh, I don't know which one I'll keep. I'll try them both and you guys tell me which one you think looks better. All right, moving onward, we have another box. Uh, this one, I want to say it's from Top Secret if I remember correctly. And I think, I think, I think this is something cool, but I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Why would I get something that's not cool? Of course it's cool, ha <laughs> ha. Dang, I got some floor mats. I don't know, it'd be cool to just like do all OEM stuff, but part of the thing for me with the 34 GTR is just, there's so many cool brands that make so much cool aftermarket stuff for the GTRs that rather than just getting all stuff from one brand and having kind of a generic build, I thought it would be cool to mix and match some cool brands that are kind of legendary in the GTR world. So 
Top secret makes these floor mats. I don't know how I feel about the gold on the edges. I feel like it looked better online, but still really good quality and it should be cool with the little gold accents that I'm gonna do with the car. So this is like a trunk mat and then the rest would be like floor mats and they have these cool little uh, top secret embroidered patches in them. They look really nice, I'm not gonna lie. I like them, I'm happy with my purchase. Again, none of this stuff is sponsored, but I would like to give a thank you to my sponsor, LZMFG, you guys can go purchase merch. No discounts. Every single order, I'm going to give you a piece of my carbon wing. I'm gonna cut it up into 300 pieces. To be honest, as stupid as an idea as that is, that would only be like, depending on which wing, that wouldn't be like that much money to do. But that'd be like a waste of a really cool wing and stupid. So we're not gonna do that, sorry. All right, one more box. Let's see what we got in this one. Actually, there's two more boxes, but this is the last box from an individual brand. I believe the last box is gonna be all OEM stuff, if I recall correctly. So let's see what we have here. These right here are extended wing stays. So if you remember kind of how an R34 GTR wing is, um, the factory wing stays are like painted and kind of low. These are from Superior and these are carbon. I'll probably end up painting them because I don't know that I want carbon wing stays or wing stands, whatever they're called. Um, but very easy to change. I've already had my wing off once before when we were polishing the car. And these just give it a little bit of extra height and a little bit more aggression. So boom and boom. All right, now this last box is from a friend of mine over at Nismo Parts Plug. Uh, he's actually from the States and he just helped me order some Nismo stuff and some OEM stuff for the 34 GTR. I might have lied, it might have actually all been just OEM Nissan stuff. I don't remember if I got any Nismo stuff from him. Um, but anyway, uh, like I said, the cool thing is you can still get a lot of OEM stuff for these cars. We got this thing, and this thing, and this thing, and this thing. Oh, and this thing. Oh, and some shirts, and a banner, and some stickers, and then this thing. I'm gonna open this box first because I think this is exciting. This is something I've bought before for my Skyline, my 32 Skyline. This and this box are brand new individual throttle bodies as well as the actual, um, like, I mean, it's just the whole setup. Uh, they're just very hard to clean up and it's nicer to put new ones in than it is to try to polish a turd with old ones with oxidation. So when I'm gonna be refreshing the motor, I just wanted all new fresh stuff. I am making such a mess. Shulman's gonna be so stoked. Hey Shulman, I was just talking about you. Come look at what I've done. These are gaskets for the ITBs. Figured I'd get some of those as well. Hurricane Adam. Hurricane Adam is what they call me. Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, this RCB? and this box. Yeah, new ITBs. Four. The GTR. Uh, my like lamps in my bumper are kind of like getting a little corroded and stuff, so this is just a new OEM lamp. Where we find these? Whoa, this is baller. I did the clear one on each side instead of one red and one clear. I hope is what I think it is. Brand new OEM trim for the outside of the car. Mine was like a little bit corroded and stuff, so it's so cool that they still make all this stuff. I'm very excited. So now is gonna be the fun part. I'm gonna unbox all this stuff and film a couple little montage clips of all my new goodies, and then we'll get to start installing stuff. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna play with the rear end of the car, specifically the wing. So I'm gonna pull the wing off, put the uh, extended risers or whatever this would be called, extended wing stands on, and then figure out which uh, rear panel I wanna use. I didn't know I was gonna feel about the carbon at first, but I think it actually complements the paint really well. You can see how much higher it's gonna be than the standard stands. Uh, quite a bit of a difference. What I'm gonna do first is actually remove the wing from the stands. It'll make it a little bit less sketchy than removing the whole wing at once. To be honest, it doesn't make much of a difference, but it's just my preference. Ignore that, I changed my mind. No. I drop one. I drop two. Now 
Now to try to get those nuts out that I lost in the trunk. I ran into a minor setback uh, and I've learned something from this. Luckily not the hard way so I can share it with you guys. So the way that these uh, wing risers or whatever you want to call them, wing stands are designed, they reuse the factory hardware and there's these countersunk Phillips bits. And I'll pull one out and I want to show you what the problem is. All right, that was about what, like two turns? If you look, focus, only like the two very end threads are being used, which is unbelievably sketchy. With only six of these holding the wing on, I went ahead and got some longer ones just to uh, get a couple more threads in there. If you look on the OEM wing stands, the threads are almost at the top of the surface. Now the issue is on these, the threads like start kind of far down, so we're not getting as many threads in. Another important thing, we're gonna use some Permatex blue thread locker just to make sure that these don't back out because if we're going 200 miles an hour, we wanna make sure that these hold the wing. I feel like the car's a pretty good color scheme going, but the one eyesore of it has been the aluminum piece on the wing. It just doesn't really flow, so I'm excited to change that over to carbon. It's got two bolts and we should be able to pop it right out. I don't know how I feel about the new wing thing. Uh, I wanted to do the dry carbon one, I liked it better, but I just didn't want it clashing with a different type of carbon stand. I guess it looks cool. I'll need to see it kind of outside and all in one situation, but. From the back, it definitely looks a lot more aggressive now. I like that shot. Now that the wing is done, next up we have the diffuser, which we don't even need to jack up the car for. Looks like there's just a couple 10 mil bolts and we should be chilling. Fun fact, these uh, V-Spec dry carbon diffusers are like five grand if you want to buy one. So it almost costs just as much to turn a non-V-Spec into a V-Spec as it is just getting a V-Spec with all the cool bits. Of course, the most simple bolt ons aren't going well. One of these screws is just so rusted and bashed and I can't get a socket on it, so I'm gonna have to cut it off and be super careful. Not to touch the expensive diffuser. This is the one that it comes with, and this is the bigger one. You can see the fin sticks out much more. This is the Nismo version. Look at this. Boom. That's gonna look sick. This has actually been a nightmare because half the bolts keep breaking from rust and stuff. I will say one thing is a little bit more complicated on this rear one. There is a little bit of trimming needed into this rear valence for the slit to slide into. So you can kind of line it up and see where it's gonna need to be and then mark with the Sharpie and we'll hit it with a grinder. All those rusted out screws made that take way longer than I should have, but the diffuser is finally done, or I should say the diffuser fins. So dumb. Uh, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change out these lights. I got two clear ones. Um, I guess the GTST thing would be doing two clear ones, but I just wasn't a fan of the mismatch, so we're gonna try both clear on both sides and see if we like how it looks a little bit better. The new one just looks so much nicer than the old one too. Oh, you need to take out your light? Oh look, how convenient. You can get to the bolt just like that. Oh, sick. Oh, yeah, bolt's coming out, brother. Super easy to change these. They just kind of slide out like this. Now we've got the clear replacement. I think it looks better. Not going too crazy with the interior yet, but I did throw one of the floor mats in, changed one of the uh, shift boots. I didn't change any other ones yet. And I'm freshening up the shift knob. The only reason why I'm doing this right now is just because I wanted to steal the shift boot to use in the chaser. Because now that I have the V160, I need one of the shift boots that has a little uh, button up top. Um, otherwise, it's like getting caught on the lever to lift up, if you know what I mean. I wonder if my GTR knob would fit in the chaser. That'd be kind of cool. I've been trying to close out this video for the past hour. I couldn't find my camera. I left it on the stupid edge of the building like a stupid idiot. But anyway, um, kind of uneventful for the first R34 video. Uh, this car just means a lot to me, not that my other ones don't, um, but I really want to do this build right, and I'm kind of all over the place with all the other builds, for lack of a better way to explain it. And I, uh, I don't want to just rush this thing, and I don't want to start pulling apart and have it sit. So right now, it's a beautiful, good looking, running car. And hopefully within the next month or two, we'll start the build. Um, but I just want to make it very clear. It's not a rush. It's not something you're gonna see anytime soon. If you subscribe to my channel only for the R34 Skyline GTR, 
maybe set a reminder for like two months to check up on it. But there's a ton of other cool stuff going on, so you guys will see if you haven't seen already. I have no idea what order all these videos are going up. I'm doing my best to be ahead on videos, so we'll see. When you say <laughs>